Welcome. In this video, I'm going to talk about simplifying rational expressions. Essentially, in most cases, what you'll do when you have this type of question is factor, uh, numerator, denominator, and then eliminate things due to the fact that dividing something by itself gives you one. So that's really where it all heads. But in the easiest case, like the one we're going to do first, what you're dealing with is simply the fact that you're dividing terms that have exponents. So this is the most simplest of forms. Uh, I should say that uh, generally I go after this type of thought when I have it set up like this using the order of operations which would be uh, parentheses, exponents, multiply, divide, add, subtract. The big numbers are the coefficients, numbers in front. I usually refer to the big brothers, so this and this they are doing a division relationship. So when I look at the exponents, uh, I need to make sure I'm just subtracting them. So there's that. The first thing that I need to do is set my 72 over 48 up as its own sort of fraction and then reduce it. So 72 over 48, and if I get that in uh, my head about how to reduce it, don't think it's fancy, it's just treated as normal, it'll reduce down to 3 over 2. From here, I'm left with 3n to the 4th over 2n to the 2nd. That's kind of where that's all headed. Um, like I said before, if you divide the coefficients of the big brothers, you subtract the little brothers of the exponents. I tend to circle the bigger one to remind me where my final answer is going to go, so I end up with 4 minus 2, and that's 2, so I get n to the 2nd power here, so 3n to the 2nd and then I still got that 2 on the bottom. So what I'm really doing, to break it out a little bit, if I wanted to work n, 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 and then 2 ends there, uh, the 3 over 2 stays, this cancels with this, this cancels with this, and I'm left with 2 n, so n to the second power. So it should have left me with that as my final answer, and if I could actually get up to press the button, and it is. It also asks me a question about what are the excluded values? You may can, they may refer to these as points of discontinuity. What they want to know, is there anything in the final answer, or uh, at any point really, where you can't um, make the denominator, or in the beginning of it, not the final answer, uh, at any point that you could sort of, it wouldn't work, make the denominator zero. As you know, or you should know at this point, you can't divide by zero. Anything divided by zero will end up giving you an error, undefined, or you can't divide by zero. Uh, if we were looking at it graphically, we would say it's undefined. You'd have this whole thing going on. But uh, the idea is, now that I have my answer of 3n squared over 2, I need to look for points of discontinuity. All I'm going to do is look in the denominator and see what happens if I set it equal to zero. Um, you divide both sides by 48. You can divide zero by stuff, so that works and you'll take the square root and the square root of zero is of course zero so zero is my point of discontinuity occasionally or excluded value is the same thing I'm just using the terms interchangeably so I may say that as my setup and as you can see it should match out with what, I, what I'm looking for so there you go now uh, in the next one get more advanced not much more uh, we need to do a little bit of factoring before we could do anything else so I'm going to factor my numerator here and I'm going to do that by thinking, okay, well, this sign says that the signs are both the same because it's plus. This one has a minus, so they're both minus, so I'm going to end up with m minus something and m minus something else. Since I have same signs, I need to do a little bit of, uh, I need to do factor tree for 20, and I'm going to look to add factors to reach 12. Well, obviously, that's not going to help me, but that one certainly will because 2 plus 10 is 12. So I'm going to put 10 here and 2 here, not that it makes much difference, because you can put them in any order you want. Now I need to see if there's anything on the top and on the bottom, and I'm going to treat this m minus 2 like it's its one single unit. If I have an m minus 2 on the, in the numerator and the denominator, they'll cancel, much like 4 divided by 4 gives you 1, m minus 2 over m minus 2 does as well. So what I'm left with is a final answer of m minus 10 would be my simplified version of that rational expression. What about my excluded value stuff? I need to set it equal to 0 and say that in the case that m is equal to 2, I ha it doesn't work. So I'd say my excluded value is positive 2. Um, the reason, if you put 2 here, 2 minus 2 is 0, and once again, can't have a denominator of 0. So I'm going to check my answer really quickly to make sure I'm correct. Things are looking good. 
I even put the semicolon this time. That's a st step in the right direction. Uh, let me cancel all this stuff out. In this case, I need to see is there anything uh, that I can reduce, and there are cases in which it's possible that you can't reduce them at all, but I'm going to look to see if there's anything that I can sort of pull out or work with or whatever it happens to be. Um, I can factor out a 3 from 21 and 6. So I'm going to factor out 3. Uh, if I divide both these by 3, it'd give me 7p plus 2. And on the top, 3 goes into 12 as well, so if I pull 3 out, I end up with 4p squared. Why does that matter? Well, it matters because those cancel. And you end up with 4p squared over 7p plus 2. Now, to do my uh, excluded value or my point of discontinuity, I'm going to say negative 2 sevenths will put me in a situation in which I would have, and that was a that was really bad curvy bracket right there, um, will put me in a situation in which I have a point of discontinuity, or denominator is 0. So let me check this one to make sure that's correct. And it is. <coughs> so uh, there's that setup. It's not really that complicated, but this one was a little bit tough. When you first look at it, it's like, well, what am I supposed to do? Can you factor out any numbers? If you can, that's probably what they're asking you to do. And occasionally, you don't do anything. You can't reduce it at all. I'm not doing one here. I'm just saying that does happen. Um, in this case, it's a little bit more grandiose in the sense that you do have to do your um, factoring here. The hardest part of this one is that you have to think uh, clearly and get your signs correct. Otherwise, you'll be eliminating stuff that you don't need to eliminate or you'll forget stuff that you need to eliminate. Signs really matter here because if you start marking stuff out, you better make sure you're marking the right things out. So I need to look at my signs. This one says they're going to be the same. This says they're both minus. So I'm going to end up with an N minus situation and an N minus situation again. I need to do a factor list for 63. Uh, 1 and 63, and I know as I go down it'll be 7 and 9, because 9 plus 7 equals 16. So I'm going to put n minus 7 here, n minus 9 here. Now from here, for my second step, I need to do, or for my denominator I should say, this tells me the signs are going to be different because it's a minus. Uh, the minus here just tells me that the bigger number is going to be negative, but that really is sort of an irrelevance. So 45 and if the signs are different, n minus something and n plus something, I need to be dealing with the reality that um, I subtract the factors to find that 4. So I know that 9 and 5 is one of the sets. There are two opportunities for me to use 9 and 5 with different signs. I could use 9 minus 5, which gives me positive 4, or I can do 5 minus 9, which gives me negative 4. This is the situation I want because this is a negative 4. So I need to put the 9 behind the minus. Now I just look to see if there are any things uh, on in the numerator and the denominator as well. So my n minus 9's go away. So I end up with n minus 7 on top, n plus 5 on the bottom. You probably won't have the parentheses in the final answer. Now, to get my excluded values or my points of discontinuity, I need to look in setting these up separately equal to 0. So n is equal to negative 5, and n is equal to positive 9, because you add plus 9 on both sides, that whole thing. So my points of discontinuity would be negative 5 and 9. Now, it is really super easy, if you have a multiple choice question, to have that first part correct, and then put 5 and negative 9 as your points of discontinuity, because that's what's written in the denominator. You have to be careful. You have to set up equal to zero to make sure you solve for the correct thing. Otherwise, you get the wrong answer. It's really frustrating and annoying, and no one likes it. So there you go, the answer. Um, one more, I think, and that'll be good. So for this one, I'm going to slip over to number 12, because it's kind of a beast. And if you can get the beast out of the way, uh, the littler ones become much simpler. Uh, so the first thing that I want to do is look for a common factor. 2 goes into all the top, so I'm going to go ahead and pull out a common factor and say 2 multiplied by the quantity a squared minus a minus 12. On the bottom, 
First off, I know that they all have a in them at least, so I'm going to pull a squared out because it is the smallest. And also 9 goes into all of them, so I'm going to pull 9 out as well. Once I do that, I end up with a squared minus 2a uh, minus 8. So that's the first step. The second step, I need to factor the tops and the bottoms, but just what's inside the uh, parentheses here. So the 2 is going to stay. This sign tells me they're going to be different, so I need to do a plus something and a minus something. On the bottom, incidentally enough, I'm doing 9a squared, and it's going to be different signs as well. a plus something, a minus something. So I need to do a factor list of 12 here. And there's 1 and 12, 2 and 6, and 3 and 4. I want negative 1, so I'm going to pick this setup. 3 minus 4 gives me negative 1, so I need to put my 3 here and my 4 here. Similarly, if I'm doing 8, I have 1 and 8, 2 and 4, and that's pretty much it. Uh, I want negative 2, so this setup works very well to make that, so I need to put the 2 here and the 4 here. Now I can start making my uh, little comparison statements about what's left over. So I've got an a minus 4 on the top and the bottom, so those cancel out. So my final answer, in the simplified form anyway, would be 2a plus 3, or 2 times a plus 3, and then 9a squared times the quantity a plus 2. Now. From here, I need to find my excluded values, so I'm going to set all three of the components that I have left equal to zero. So 9a squared, I'm actually going to change colors to do this last bit, just because of the fact that I, want to, I don't want it to sort of mix together. It would help if I turn the pen back on. Still not doing it. Sheesh. There. 9a squared equals 0, a plus 2 equals 0, and a minus 4 equals 0. So plus 4, a is equal to 4, minus 2, a is equal to uh, n positive, minus 2, sorry, negative 2. And in the final set, I end up with uh, divide by 9, a squared equals 0, so a equals 0 as well. So my final points of, uh, or excluded values of points of discontinuity would be 0, negative 2, and 4. So let's check those answers to see if they're right, because it's possible that they're not. If they are, I'll have to start over and you'll never see this. But it isn't. It works out uh, exactly the way that I had hoped it would, because I don't want to do the problem over again. Now, you may notice that that a uh, minus 4 doesn't pop up in the final answer. It cancels. But it is in <clears throat> the next to last step. So before you cancel out, when you look for your excluded values, that's going to need to be in there, because it's part of the original equation. And when you graph it uh, as y equals 2a squared minus 2a minus 24 over 9a to the fourth minus 18a to the third minus 72a squared, you'll see there'll be points there that don't exist. So, or there won't be points there because they don't exist, that whole thing. Um, but your setup is really making sure that you find those excluded values. So that's it. I hope this is helpful.